My name is Mike Graff, one of the co-owners of Unparalleled Movement, and I got to tell you guys just kind of the baseline story of how everything came about. So my freshman year in high school, my buddy Kent and I were uh, bored one day. It was raining outside, so we just moved some chairs and some like punching bags around in my basement and built an obstacle course out of front. My dad sees what we're doing and sends me a video and says, hey, this is a this is a video of pretty much what you're trying to do, but way cooler. And we ended up watching the video, and it turned out being an Oleg video of uh, him doing some crazy parkour stuff. And at the moment, we're like, there's no way we can do this, but we can at least try around with some of the basics. Eventually, some of our friends saw what we were doing and said, hey, this, is, this looks cool, we should do it with you. So we'd teach them as much as we knew at the moment and just tried to help them uh, get caught up to what we had already learned through experimentation. Yeah, there's a bunch of different age people training with us, about 30 at the time. So we started the Missoula Parkour Group, is what we called it. And we started doing t-shirts just to, you know, advertise what we did. Thought it was something cool. And as we grew, we realized, hey, we're getting to the point where in order to actually learn flips and the things that we want to know, we have to, we have to go somewhere inside. There's no way we're just going to try backflips outside. So we ended up going and approaching a gymnastics gym, Mismo Gymnastics, and asked, or told them what we were doing, and they seemed to be down with it. So we started a class there. That's where we met Micah Marino, who ended up being becoming our third business partner at the time. We did that for, I want to say, like between like a year and two years. We out here, and then they told us that they could no longer insure our program, and that parkour would either have to stop completely at the gym or we'd have to form our own company and keep teaching classes but on our own. Like right around that time was really a turning point in my life when I realized that parkour wasn't just fun, it was just something it was something I wanted to do. Like always for the rest of my life. And it wanted to be like my thing. And so I couldn't just like give up on having parkour classes in Missoula. So I really was behind that idea of creating your own business which would uh, eventually, obviously, lead to this gym. We so out here. <laughs> so out here. Look at this. Screw. We had no idea what we were doing at all. But I've always felt pretty strongly in what we're doing, and I've always really trusted us, trusted all of our team and all the guys we work with that whatever we decide we need to do, that's what will happen. So we started working on the business, going through all of like the crazy hoops and stuff. We had no idea how to work out, creating licenses and stuff like that, and trying to. Just figure out all the nitty gritty details. We started teaching classes at Mismo, yet again, but under our own name, Unparalleled Movement. And then eventually, after like a few months of, of classes and then a couple months of summer camp, they told us that we weren't able to stay in that space just because they were getting too big for the space and we couldn't fit both in at once. Um, so that was when it was time to go find our own facility. So we're like, all right. So we did. Uh, we built a park out in the back parking lot, so we could stay there for a few extra months and try to fundraise in order to move into our own facility. We raised about five thousand dollars that summer, and uh, when we left Mismo, that's how much we had in the bank. So we were looking around for warehouses, had no idea what we were doing, and it was just one of those insurmountable ob um, obstacles that you you look at and you're just like, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to begin approaching this as a, as a problem. So as we were like looking for our own building, which is something that we wanted to have, we didn't want to rent and share space with um, the people we were with, um, it was looking like it was going to put us in the debt. And we didn't really want to be in the debt, like looking at the logistics of like, okay, we have a building, it's going to cost X amount of money a month, and then getting it up to code and doing all that stuff, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, like, and we, we managed to not go into debt at all, purely because we had the right people to work with 
and that we just chose not to, 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 to do that. Like we just didn't go to the bank and ask for a loan. We just kept seeing if there was another way to do it. And sure enough, here we are, like we've never been into debt. Um, we have a profitable company and um, it's, it's pretty amazing. So we have the ability to be like, cool, let's take all the money we have in the bank and do something cool with it. And that's what we're doing. I mean, we haven't really paid ourselves, but we put a lot of money into our playground and I'd rather have that than some money I'm just gonna blow on food, you know? We ended up finding a warehouse and it didn't work out. It was like too small or this one was too expensive or whatever. We ended up stumbling into the warehouse that we're in now. So we ended up moving in and we became uh, kind of neighbors and roommates with Bitterroot Gymnastics and other gymnastics gym. Because this time, we weren't sharing a space, we were just sharing a building. So we had one half and they had the other. And so yeah, we moved, we moved all of our stuff in and started to build. We didn't know what we were doing. So fortunately, one of our um, friends knew a little bit about construction and we just started working towards it. And the, the trickiest part about this whole thing was dealing with city and the red tape and codes and all these things that we had no idea even existed. Like filing for a change of use, that was new terms to me at the time. And uh, it's crazy how much I've learned since then and how much we as a team have grown. when I say this but like it's a big deal that there's a gym like this in Missoula, Montana. I mean like I would have killed to have a gym like this growing up when I was a kid and there's not that many parkour gyms in this country and to have one of them in Missoula it's super cool. I want an environment to where people are only limited by their desire and work ethic not due to the fact that they live in Montana. I think that it's very rewarding to do something that didn't exist before you were here. And to make changes that will impact other people inevitably, like, like forever, you know? Like, the people that come to this gym are different because they came to this gym. And it's fun to watch and it's rewarding because it's like that, this kid is doing this and is having a blast and is in this cool culture that we created because we went through hell for a few years to make it happen. And it just, it makes it all worth it, especially when you talk to parents and they're like, oh, thankfully, like my kid has tried everything. And this is what they found, like they love this, they're pumped about it. I've never seen my kid like this excited about a thing ever before. And hearing that from multiple people is, it's, it definitely, brings it into perspective. I feel that this has always been a really important thing to me because I feel so passionately about parkour and about the community and about the movement. And it's really guided me through my life the last six years. And I feel like I should be able to share this with other people. And I feel like the best way for me to share this at my point in life is with this gym. So all these other kids who are, you know, five, or you know, 15, or it, maybe they're an adult at this point, can understand and share the movement that we all love so much. I think one of the coolest moments that I've had through all of this is seeing like either kids who've come into the gym or like, comments on YouTube videos or meeting kids other places that I get to travel who have told me that I'm the reason, or part of the reason why they've gotten into parkour. I think that's the coolest thing, is that even though I might be going out and training for myself, that when other people get to see it, that it inspires them to a point where they want to be part of parkour. And just in the way that, like, David Bell, Oleg Vorslav, like, a bunch of, like, the British guys inspired me first off to make me want to get into parkour, that I can have the same effect on other people. And that's really humbling and incredibly powerful for me to have an effect like that on someone else's life. We're all very young. Micah was 21 when we started this. Andrew, I think, was 23. And now Michael and I are still both 20. 
and we've created this entire facility with Micah and with Andrew. And it's just like, there's no reason to sit on it and wait if you have a good idea and a lot of, you know, heart into what you want to do. You might as well just go for what you have because it might be the right time. Like, if you work hard enough, things will work out for you and you'll find success in what you like to do.